Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today on the channel, we're going to continue our restoration of this realistic STA 2100. But I don't know about where you guys live, but I'm in Florida and we got snow and it is cold down here. So wherever you are, make sure you're staying warm. Currently, it is 40 degrees in my shop and I'll put a picture up here just to show it. I forgot to leave the heater on and so I'm freezing my butt out here to make this video for you guys. So I really hope you guys send some warm wishes my way. So in order to change this switch out guys, and I have the switch here, we're gonna have to chain, take off the face plate and all the knobs with it as well. And that allows us to have access to that switch to be able to pull it out and go ahead and swap it out. So why don't you guys come in closer and we'll go ahead and get started. All right guys, in order to get this off, we're gonna need a cross point screwdriver. And then on this, we're gonna need an Allen wrench as well. And so if you look here on the side, you'll see two screws. And so we've got two screws on this side and we got two screws on the opposite side. And then we have two screws on the bottom of the faceplate uh, that we'll have to flip the faceplate over in order to get access to. Once we've done that, guys, and we've removed these knobs, most of these just pull off, <clears throat> with the exception of this one, we'll have to use the Allen wrench. Uh, then we'll be able to move that faceplate off. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. You guys just stick around for the ride. And just like that, the faceplate comes off. Yeah! So there's the power switch. And so if you notice right up at the front, we've got two screws. So we've got to remove those screws to get this power switch off. And then this is like a little shroud here that goes over it. And it's kind of a neat thing because the shroud basically directs the light that we get where it turns from red to green. There's an LED right here on this other side. So I'm gonna go ahead and take those screws out and then we'll go ahead and see if we can't pull the switch out from the back. And so once I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and change the camera view. And then that way you guys can see me pulling the switch out. So uh, I'm gonna do that off camera and we'll be back in just a Now we have that, those two screws removed. And so now this shroud will just slide right off. And so as it slides right off, you guys can see that LED I was talking about. And here's the actual switch here. And so it's kind of an ingenious uh, design. And so this LED switches from red to green once the relay click and once it comes out of protection. And so now all we have to do is just push this uh, switch back and it'll slide right out. So let me make sure that I get you guys in a good camera view. We'll zoom out a little bit here. And we're gonna turn the receiver so you guys can see it. And so this is our switch back here. So all we're gonna do guys is just push it through. Lord willing. and pull it out so we have access. So now we have access to the screw, or to the switch, and we can go ahead and start uh, thinking about how we're gonna take this apart. So we've got a little bit of stuff going on here with the switch. So you can see here, guys, that this is that white and red wire that was bypassed here. And so this is basically where it connects the circuit and allows it the unit to be powered on. Or <clears throat> but we still have some other wires here and here as well. And so we have this little circuit board. So you'll see the three uh, solder points on either side. Those we're not gonna mess with, but these six solder points in the middle, we'll have to unsolder those and that allow us to pull the circuit board out. And the other thing we're gonna have to do guys is making sure that we put on the ceramic capacitor back on the other switch as well. So just a little auxiliary work we have to do. The next big thing guys, once we get that off is, the, it's really hard to see, but these pins here are kind of folded over and wrapped around the hub of the switch. And that's just to hold it on and kind of give it some more reinforcement. So we're gonna have to unfold those and that'll allow this whole apparatus to come out and then we can place it back onto the new uh, switch. Now. With the new switch in the past, this has kind of been a slightly different size. And so we've really had to kind of have a little effort to get it to slide on the switch, but the switches that I've been using uh, actually will, will do that and it, it will work. We just got to make sure that we hook everything back up uh, the way we see it now. So if you don't know guys uh, how to do this, or you're unsure, make sure you take a few pictures of this. Uh, that way when you're doing this process, this isn't an issue for you. Like I said in a previous video, this is a known issue with these uh, receivers. The switch goes bad. And what will happen is that as it goes bad, it'll go in and out of protection. 
And so in some, when it finally completely goes bad, it just won't come out of protection all because it's, it's really just kind of completing the circuit, not completing the circuit, completing the circuit, not completing the circuit. And so eventually the switch just goes bad. And so I'm assuming that's what happened with this. I didn't test this switch, but since it was bypassed, I'm assuming that it's bad. So we're just gonna swap it out because I know it is a known issue. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that guys. And uh, you guys can just stick around for the ride. And if I block the camera view, guys, I'm going to do my best to show you guys what I'm doing. But if I do block the camera view, I'm sorry ahead of time. Alright guys, I'm sure y'all saw that. I had a pretty hard time getting that off. It was, I don't know if it's just the temperature outside, but I just could not get these solder joints to break and then uh, come free. But finally we got this out. So now I just need to take this capacitor and put on the old switch. And so, <clears throat> uh, yeah, so I think we're almost there. I'm going to have to go ahead and strip some of this wire back because we will have to connect it back to the top of the switch. So let me go ahead and do that as well, as long as long along with uh, removing this and putting it on the new switch as well. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So here we are. I've got the capacitor soldered back on to the switch. So now we're going to flip the switch over and we're going to put it back on. And so the red wire is on this back end, I believe. So we're just going to put it through. Make a nice little loop de loop. Do the same thing with the white one, but I'm going to put some solder flux on there first and then go ahead and solder that joint while it's nice and open. And so I'm just taking a screwdriver and just kind of putting some flux all over it. The flux helps the solder stick to the component and kind of draws the uh, solder in. So very important part of doing this. It really just makes it a lot easier when you're soldering things. So that is nice and soldered tight on there. Got a good bond. So now let's slide our white wire through as well. I'm gonna make a little loop-de-loop -loop there. And repeat that process. So I'll scoop up some flux with my screwdriver. Go ahead and put it on the wire and then on the terminal as well. Just to make sure we get a good solder joint and then we'll go ahead and hit that with some solder and that's what you see when you see the smoke guys that's what that is that's the solder kind of getting melted off these loose wires here i'm going to kind of Flip around and I'm going to re-hit it with some more solder just to make sure I get a nice strong joint. But you definitely don't want this coming loose later on. More strands coming loose or any of that stuff. So let's go ahead and solder this nice and clean. All right, guys. Now we've got the switch wired back up into the 
proper orientation. So now we can take this and flip it around and then go ahead and plug it back through the circuit board here. So hopefully this won't be too much of a pain in the butt because it was a pain in the butt to get off. So let me go ahead and do that. And let's see if we can't get lucky and see if it goes into the holes uh, easily. And then y'all have to apologize for the camera view because it is kind of difficult with such a small part. Trying to get things lined up. And there we go, guys. It slid right in. No problem. So now all we have to do is go ahead and hit these with solder and then we'll be ready to hook it back up and hope it works. And I think that looks good. <clears throat> so I don't think we need to do anything else with those solder joints. We can go ahead and slide the switch back in and then we'll bolt it in and we'll give it a test run. Capacitors getting in the way, so let's fold this over. It's always fun working with these small things, trying not to get anything caught. You got it flipped upside down, so let me flip it around. I think it needs to go like this. Silly me. Silly me. All right, there we are. So let me turn the receiver so you guys get a better view. So here's that's the new switch. So we just need to pull it through and then put our screws in. So let me find my screws. And I'm just going to kind of hold the back of it and then use the screw to kind of pull it flush. I'm not going to tighten that first one all the way down until I get the second one started. Now go back and tighten that other one. All right, guys. So now we're ready to give this a test. So I'm going to go ahead and plug it into the dim bulb tester. <clears throat> Not going to reach it. Make sure the switch is in the off position. And we'll go ahead and slide the shroud over. Just for good measure. So Hopefully, I'm going to flip the uh, switch on for the dim bulb tester, guys. We shouldn't see anything happen because now the switch should be controlling the unit. So there's the dim bulb tester. Nothing's come on. So now let's hit the switch and see if we get relay click. All 
All right, guys, so you just saw it yourselves. Uh, everything's working fine. That means the switch is working good. The unit's powered up. Let's turn it off. I'm gonna zoom you guys out. And since now that we have the power switch uh, installed and that's working, we're gonna go ahead and hit some test speakers up. And I'm just curious, you know, because I'm just curious if this thing actually produces music since it's coming out of protection. So let me change the camera and we'll go ahead and take a look at that. All right, welcome back guys. So we just got done changing out the power switch. And so we did a little test run and it comes out of protection. We go from red to green, so that's always a good sign, but we still haven't actually tried to put music through it. So I went ahead and hooked it up to my test speakers. And so it's powered on now. So I'm gonna play the, uh, the melody I seem to have fallen in love with and let's see how it sounds. Well, guys, uh, I think it's playing music, so that's a good sign. So I'm kind of surprised because uh, the power cord is cut on this thing. We talked about why the power cord might be cut on one of these units. And so I'm assuming that someone just didn't realize that the power switch was bad on this and <clears throat> cut the power cord just to be safe. So we've kind of gotten really lucky on this receiver. Um, internally, this thing is flawless. And so it's actually one of the cleanest uh, realistic STA 2100s I've worked on. And so I don't think this thing was used very often. I think probably it had that failure early on in its life and it was set aside and just not used. And so since then it's just been collected a little dust, but other than that, this thing's in great shape. So this is gonna really make a nice stereo for someone later on. So even though it's working now, guys, we're gonna go ahead and still move on to the power supply section. We're gonna change out the transistors and capacitors on that board. We'll also move on to the amp board after that and we'll do the exact same thing. And then from there, we'll do the protection board. After that, guys, we'll focus on the cosmetic issues, maybe replace some of the bulbs in here with LEDs. And then we'll also uh, probably build a custom case for this, I'm assuming, because the other one's banged up or I may have an old case somewhere. And then, you know, focus on cleaning and just do, touching it up. So this is really going to make a nice unit for someone and it'll be ready to go to its new home once we do all those things. So if you've got one of these units and your, your power switch is acting kind of faulty or going in and out, it's probably time to change that switch. There is a gentleman on eBay that sells these switches and at a pretty reasonable price. And so <clears throat> go ahead and do this repair. It's not very hard. It takes probably about 30 minutes to do if you know what you're doing. And then you'll have a functioning stereo after that. So it's a pretty good, easy fix uh, to uh, and give more life to your stereo. So well worth the, uh, I think it's 20 or $25 the guy charges for the switch on eBay. So well worth that price. So I hope you guys found value in this content today and I look forward to seeing you guys on the next video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.